the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkanu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them, as Psalmist also says in Psalms 23 verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Such goodness and goodwill to them, in eternity past being chosen in the praise of the Lord our God for His glory, who love to do only the delights of His pleasure, and nothing else than that, by restoring their soul from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint, by understanding the word of the Lord our God which ought to be, breath by breath in the cherishing and the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and not to be like an idiot as 1 Corinthians 14 15 verse 16 writes the unlearned which has been translated when a man who hasn't been to realize what it is an idiot if he's coming to the congregation, if he doesn't know what you're speaking in tongues, how he could say Amen with you. The unlearned which has been translated as idotes or idiot is not the same word which has been translated unlearned in 2 Peter 3.18 wherewith it has been said in verse number 15 those who are unlearned and unstable there the word is amatates. But here we can find unlearned as idiots. Not able to realize every breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, have to be not speaking in tongues. The tongues have been seized long back. But those who walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, will love to cleanse the garbage of their soul. Because it is great Lord God the Father who is going to restore our soul. The process of restoring according to the original creation of the Lord our God who has made for us demands Bible doctrine. That's what we read in the great benediction of Romans chapter 16 verses 25 and following. This mystery of the church age, which was been hidden in the past, but now through the church, which has been made known for us, and also according to the gospel of the preaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to the mystery or the apocalyptic revolution of this mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now it has been made manifested by the scriptures of the prophets the church age doctrine do not been given so clearly the mechanics of it by that we mean the plural of Baltimore privileges, 
by that we mean after the completion of the can of scripture we have everything revealed and kept for us so by the prophets we mean though we may not have the including mechanics as apostle paul expounds them but by the prophets he has already spoken for us that there will be a generation of the ariats of the aliens of the terrifying ones with the seed of christ in them by unsheathing the sword of them every day they would get to wound the self-will knowledge of satan and for that cause in the same epistle of romans chapter 16 verse 20 he says speedily you shall crush satan under your feet there is no excuse if you are not able to crush satan under your feet And for that cause, he says, the grace of the Lord our God be with you. In Ephesians 6, he says, the grace of the Lord our God be with them, those who love my Lord in sincerity. The reason what we want to tell dear brethren, renovate the standards of your thinking. Don't be idote speaking in tongues. In your emotional ecstasy, you are ruining your own spiritual life. We have called to renovate the standards of our thinking through the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And for that cause, he has given us everything earlier by the prophets, what we are expounding now in the book of Ezekiel 28, verses 7 through 10, teaching to us the purpose of this alien group which is going to come. And in Psalms 22, the greatest epistle, the greatest psalm in verses 23 to 31, teaching to us the generation which shall come and serve him this great revolution which has been given for us which has been first by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting lord of a god so that it could be made known to all nations for those who are having that great obedience and the greek word hupakao meant to say obedience rendered to the counsel of the lord's mind absorbing the requirements and the demands of the word of the lord of a god that's hupakano and obedience of what? Pistes, the faith. Pistes relating to light God, relating to Christ, related to the things which have been declared and kept for us in the word of the Lord of our God, and it has been simply called as fidelity, faithfulness. And this is what, dear brethren, many people don't have, that fidelity to believe in my Christ. Even though the word of the Lord our God says we are in the church age, even though the word says we are being dealing with the mystery doctrine of the church age, but we are not able to give to the only wise Lord our God that glory through Jesus Christ which belongs to him forever and forever. And though the prayer which has been made for us in John chapter 17 teaches to us again and again, we have all the authorities at our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over every flesh and through our holy manner walk of life by becoming the light and salt principle of this earth even we have been called for them to pull out from darkness by every conversation what we have to be enlightened in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and if at all they think the New Testament has been written for our converts or for our things but they will never understand what has been written according to the prophets of the Old Testament this great mystery doctrine the people signifying us that we shall come in Ezekiel 28. According to the prophets, the work was only one thing, daily teaching Bible doctrine. Zephaniah 3, 5. Morning by morning coming to teach for you all the attributes of the word of the Lord of our God. According to the prophets, we can even count King David as a prophet as well as king. Two officers he had. There he says in Psalms 23, I will not lack anything. What a great word it is, Kosare. Nothing as a failure, nothing as a thing that I've been made lower to want. And the word Kasare or Chesa, C H E C E R, or K H A W S H E R, Kasar. You will lack nothing set long back. And he gives a principle for us in Psalms 23. You know how this man, when we read Exodus 16 and 17, we find for food they cried, for water they cried, 
But today, though we have abundance of grace and abundance of Bible doctrine, and we have the completed canon of scripture of 66 books depict, depicting our life, you are not in a mood to cry to the Lord our God and ask for your spiritual food daily, but rather in return being inculcated in the own standards of your negative thinking, lower standards of your mind, the standards which have been debased, the standards which calls into the mind of Hosea 4, 6, which teach to us dissolving the original language of the scriptures to be taught in our pulpits, entertained by the entertaining clowns, Taken care by the Klepteis, Lashteis, Misthotes, Thupas, Canapes, Tiflos, and Shuras, oriented minded ones in our pulpits. Do you know what it happens? These are the men who have been destroying that which is should be not a lack to your soul. But since they are lacking to their belly, and since they are not able to get along to become their God to be their belly, and to become for some pieces of bread or for a handful of barley to the ministry, they are making you to lack. For which cause he has made you to be the kind of catesis in the church age, being declared for us long back in the things pertaining to the prophets itself. And that's what after 40 the, after the resurrection, the 40 days of teaching was all about expounding to them the importance of these lessons which have been given for us long back. It was through Apostle Paul we learn. It is through the apostles whom he has chosen, particularly through John. But after the great wide period of 26 years, when he comes into the Patmos Island in a vision and he writes, and the moron Sheikh Hamadidad wants to court. He was in a trance, he was in a drunkard nature. That's why he has written those revolutions. <laughs> the man who read that might have been in a drunkard nature to tell those things, being not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The divine revolution, the apocalypti, what we read, shows for us in 1 John 3, 9 that we have the sperm of Christ, the same thing what we read in Psalms 22. The same thing what we read in the things pertaining to Ezekiel 28. The Zara, who shall have to recount the Sofer, who shall love to teach this great mind of Christ. Because if you love the Lord God the Father, you ought to love your brother also, says the word in 1 John 4.21. But do we really love our brethren? You yourself are not able to feed how you can feed others. If you have something to feed others, then only you can feed them. If you don't have anything, what you can feed? Except sheer rats. Except silly examples. Except some standards of sheer rats of oratory, moral teachings. And what a shame it will be when we stand in His presence to look. That much is given for us and much is expected from us and yet we prove to our Lord our God we are not worthy to be depended upon. Therefore, dear brethren, we shall have a word of prayer. Being not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, those who are listening to these tapes, be aware to get back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We are dealing with the great things of the Lord our God. We are not here to dissolve his law which has been given for us through Adonai Eloheinu. The law which he has given Hosea 4, 6. The people, they became silent to proper exposition of the word of Lamad work during the times of the prophets. Who would in return make the priests to understand the word and the kings to realize the truth and follow the mandates of the word of the Lord of God being spoken by those prophets. Therefore, whenever we, we read in the Hebrew, it says, I became the word of the Lord of a God. He becoming to me the word of the Lord of a God. But that they meant to say what? Those prophets were of the great value to that time to be that they were as gods because they were the mouth of God. And that was the fear that has to be rendered. The simple procedure what we read in Psalms 23. Where many people might have learnt it by heart. 
but to understand the real intention of the purpose of that mechanics. Calling again to mind to realize Proverbs Z 34 day by day coming and waiting in his door post to take Bible doctrine and to change our course of life. And Psalms 23 is a great example for us to learn. When he is teaching for us, when we are obedient to drop in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, how he is going to provide for us our food before the enemies, how he is going to provide for us the things that have been needed to have that absolute confidence in you, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life because I will not change to come to Bible doctrine every day. The same thing what they wept. For 40 years he made them to get that spirit, that physical manna. Where there was a dry land when he spoke, when he broke, when he hit the rock, water came out. And for the second time he was asked to speak. And there we find the failure of Moses, which is another story. But here in Exodus 17, we said Christ is going to die only once for us on the cross. The second time we come by faith and we believe by faith. We just talk to our Lord our God by speaking to say, Father, we believe upon thy Son, abundant grace which are bestowed upon us, abundant mercy which are put upon us. And if God could be for us, who could be against us? While we were at sinners, he gave his dear beloved Son for us. Now we are his friends. How do you think he will withheld every good thing for us? He will certainly provide us much more than the most. And that much more than the most is Bible doctrine. And yet many people who love to dissolve the right principle of Hosea 4.6. If they reject the knowledge of the word of the Lord our God, Lord our God is going to reject you. What is that knowledge which they have to be taught? They at file. To have a right fear of the Lord our God. When those who walk in the right fear of the Lord our God, Psalms 23 applies for them. What is the right fear? Every day coming to Bible doctrine, carrying their cross and coming to follow the Lord, waiting upon the doorposts of Proverbs 8, 31 through 36 to teach his delight is with the sons of the man. And if you are not having that delight, absolutely the Hebrew word kore, which meant to say the wrath of the Lord our God abideth upon you. And you read Lamentations 3, how it teaches for us. Your broken bones, your skin being rotten out. Not able to even realize the grace that has been provided for you by faith alone in Christ alone because many on this earth are ungrateful and unthankful. So are they after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be ungrateful and unthankful and forsake the mercies of the Lord our God for some lying vanities. And since they absolve lying vanities as number one fundamentals in their life, Lamentations 3, 1 through 9 will certainly work in their lives. He is going to put for you the Dorsiness of the metal chains, the copper gifts you can call, is introducing in you the poison and tiredness in your flesh. He is making you, for you if you believe it or not, the paths of you to be crooked. And who will be according to that glory of the Lord of our God, that great wrath of the Lord of our God upon us? Who will stand? What does He demand from you? To obey and to be having absolute confidence in his word and not to forsake that confidence for some throwing away as useless for the details of this life. And the rest of the people who are in the Christendom we are talking about, the cultish denominations where Satan is an unslipping fear for us. It has taken much of the time, whether you believe it or not, to trample you but you have been called to trample Satan under your feet. It is loving to introduce seduction and corrupt standards in our pulpits which were not in the mind of Christ. By the so-called entertainers who come to the pulpits are doing so. By not having proper enlightenment in the word of the Lord our God, by dissolving the only technique what the Bible calls as the law of Adonai Elohenu, which is to isolate, categorize and exegete the word of the Lord our God with proper dispensing technique of dispensations day by day. Not week by week. Coming morning one hour, evening one hour and making to be called you Christians, to be as a Christians if you are a disciples of the Lord our God and if you are still idiotess. 
How can an unlearned say amen? said the word in First Corinthians 14. The unlearned in the Greek is idiotes, idiot, what we call in our language. If you gibberishly jump along and dance along and talk along in tongues and you think that's a real edification for you, if there's an idiot who has come for you to the church, who hasn't known that he has to be a disciple, who hasn't known that he should be a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as well, and in fact, indeed, the Christians in the organizations who have been working for the sake of their belly, being the greatest idiots of all time to make the congregation to talk in tongues and blaspheme my Christ. But then Gastromuthas demands, don't worry whether they believe it or not today or tomorrow. At the judgment seat of Christ, when we all stand, we will have to pay. Your beliefs are so strong that you think talking in tongues will edify you. If not, the revolution being made by the prophets was not been needed for us, says Romans 16.26. Such a great life we have, such a great purpose we have. If Lord, if not, why our Lord our God would talk for us to, time, to tell for us according to the commandments, according to the commandment of the Lord our God by the scriptures being told for us earlier by the prophets. We would have left Old Testament, would have been only in the New Testament. The error is in your thinking, dear brethren. It is not in the divine thinking of the Lord's mind. When Christ our Lord our God said, I came to fulfill the law and I put end to the law, the people are interested yet to speculate about the law. And they say particularly the Church of Christ's nomination to say, we follow only the New Testament order of worship in the church. What is the New Testament order of worship in the church? And they do not even know. The great purpose for which our Lord of God has chosen us to be the seed of him to certainly unsheath our sword and trample down Satan under our feet by getting every thought into captivity for Christ. How you can withstand your enemy if you are not stronger than your enemy. But we have been given the Sunani Lam Bononai, the joint partaker partner with us. And that John Partaker partner, who is nothing but Lord God, the Holy Spirit. He cannot use you if you are not been cleansed in your soul from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint and be used to learn Bible doctrine. Only his thinking he reflects. Not the emotional gibberish tongue, speaking in tongues. That was a warning being used from AD 30 to AD 70. The 40 years of evangelism to the Jews by the Gentiles in order to fulfill Isaiah when he said in chapter 28 and 29, particularly to them, the northern, prof the northern prophets who have used to go or who have to go to go and do the work of the evangelism, they were drinking upon the tables and vomiting. Don't mingle that with the church today that have been completed kind of scripture from 1896 and still Satan duplicates not only tongues, it also duplicates Bible doctrine and it wants to walk in the light, which is not at all light. Feel him coating your eyes to think that is light. Feel him coating your eyes to become morally good. Feel him coating your eyes to think your pious nature and you have been filled with the spirit. No, not at all. And Christ our Lord our God said in the Gospel of John chapter 4 verses 35 already white. He's not talking about the so-called present dispensation of the church age neither is hypostatic union. He's talking to them the Israelites have been given enough warning from 1441 BC till Christ our Lord our God could appear and he several times reprimands them to tell haven't you read what it is haven't you read what it is haven't you known about me what it is and yet what happened they failed to believe my Christ so he's talking to them to understand don't think after four months we're going to get the harvest but already it has been full of white Lucas A white signifying for them a complete satisfaction of the doctrine which has to be taught and enough warnings have been given to them. Enough warnings according to the five cycles of disciplines, according to the captivity which they went, according to the things pertaining to the destruction of the temple again being constructed three times, latest one by the Zerubbabel and from there from the herald. 
given them enough warnings, enough warnings. Even Christ of Allah, our God, no, not speaking to the prophets or angels, but by his son and being manifested for us in his express glory of his image. And yet they believed not in my Christ. And for that cause, even though they did not believe, he gave a warning through the tongues. And that was languages, glasalalia. It's not the gibberishly jumping along and dancing along or talking along in your human ecstasy to be called as tongues. And even after that 40 days, or 40 years, sorry, they did not believe and the destruction of the Roman people came along to destroy the temple. And where did they end up? Diaspora through all parts of this earth. And yet in his grace, as Joel has been written, the whistle of the shepherd and they will all come there. So shall be for us to realize after the rapture of the church, by his appearance whom we are waiting, the salvation for our soul, which is nothing but for the things pertaining to our physical body as well, to be redeemed from this corrupt nature, <laughs> deceased nature, and to inherent immortality. That we shall look in the future, that's for us. But for the Israelites, as Joel said, they will all gather. Though they have been diaspora, they will all gather. And yet, the time for them, the Jacob's time of troubles, the seven years, the lesser tribulation, the greater tribulation, <laughs> and then afterwards, we coming back in the millennium in Christ, and yet, in this thousand years of silence, by Satan being bound in the bottomless pit, at the last time being revealed to go and collect Gog and Mogag, that's not going to happen till the church is existing, dear brother, and forget about the things, what they tell, they're calculating the triple six, forget about the things to tell, the end times are near, forget about the things to tell, we are having an atomic bomb or nuclear bomb or this year rat or that year rat, until the church rapture take place, this incidence will not occur, even though the things you are thinking they will occur at present, you are just being to realize not when Christ our Lord of God said, such and such things will come, but be not be troubled. But you continue to daily carry your cross. You follow my Christ every day. The right work for us is now to edify our soul to be restored according to the standards of divine viewpoint, not according to the standards of the worldly lusts. We have to forego and forsake that out. But yet, in the church age, these men are not ready to look in the complete viewpoint of Bible doctrine. Therefore, dear brethren, the way of the Hosea crowd is being taken into consideration for us. The way how the people dissolved the right teachings by becoming silent. And who are they? They were the people of the Lord of our God. So it is today for us in the church. Antichrist begins with us. Not from outside enemy. Instead of Christ, whatever principle you are establishing, instead of his mind, whatever things which is not according to his law, which has been designed and given for us in the original language of the scriptures, instead of that, no matter whatever you want to put and think this could be the greater one or that could be the greater one, you think you are anti-Christ. The standards, what the Bible say for us to preach in the original language of the scriptures and you reject it, you know very well you are an anti-Christ whether you believe it or not. And for you all, we may be anti-Christ because we are not speaking in tongues, but who cares? Whether what you call us, or whether you call us cults or heretics, we don't mind. We are here to re-establish re once again what the word of the Lord of God has been given for us to understand. Day by day, the pulpits should preach the original language of the scriptures in Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Day by day, day by day, day by day. It's not the gimmicks or the legalical, legalistical activities of the church programs that you run there. 
Your things pertaining to your church programs or legalistical standards will be given for morons, for idiots. But not for the one who have been designed to be the adult sons in the church age. Those rituals have been given from past 1441 BC to explain to them what Christ our Lord our God will be on the cross. They were the type of Christ. They have been given enough knowledge to understand what they used to do every time. Entering into that great holy of the holies and seeking before the throne of grace their mercy, first for the high priest and then for the entire nation of Israel. And if they wouldn't have been given that mercy, they would realize very bad what happened to them. The early ones, again, they come the next year. When the Lord our God would accept their sacrifices, then they would cheer up to say, Yes, Lord our God has accepted and has forgiven our sins today. And that will be far greater for us today to understand in the terms of Bible doctrine to realize, dear brethren, yet we have been given every day the spiritual manna. We don't come to confess our sins and take back that spiritual manna every day till the last breath of our life on this earth. But in return, we are here to die like a mortal disease. Why can't we claim like Enoch? Why can't we live like Elijah and ask the Lord of God to take us back home? Don't we have enough guts? Though in this church age we have been given much and expected much. The player of Baltimore privileges of all time. For every believer equal privilege and equal opportunity. Not only for certain few. But they are turning out to become certain few. Because the word of the Lord of God calls for us to understand. Though many are called, few are chosen. The reason is they don't love to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. They're not aware to be fear of the Lord of a God, breath by breath. They are neither understanding what it is to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Isn't it a great shame for us that though in this church age, we have been given much. We have been called to be the Ariats. We have been called to be the terrifying ones who are Satan. And Satan should be trampled under our feet every breath of a walk of life. But now you keep up your step, you think you're trampling Satan because you're reigning in Christ. And for such believers, Psalms 23 will suit. Not for every knucklehead who can quote and memorize that Psalms 23 and say, Yes, Lord is my shepherd. Do you know what it meant to say to be a shepherding work? To tend you, to feed you with pasture, to be a companion for you. Let God the Holy Spirit is the everlasting companion in us till we go back home from the day of your salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. And what he will do, he will feed you the pasture. Colossians 1, 24 through 29. The special agnos of my labor of the pastor teacher to feed you day by day. The same thing what he says in John chapter 10. When you come in and go out, what you shall find, because I am the way, the truth, and the life, and I am the door for you. He says that he will find pasture, 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 the word of the Lord of God again. Not speaking in tongues, neither performing your miracles, neither making your healings. The miracles are healings where Christ our Lord our God has given the power to say what you bind in the earth, the same thing will be bound in the heaven. What you release in this earth will be released in the heaven. He is standing there for us to say, sin no more. When you have been healed or taken that miracle in your life. Remember Naaman, what we read us today. Remember Ethiopian eunuch, he did not go to pay the rituals in the church, in the Jerusalem temple, but he realized the church age and he came back. Where is the water for me to take the responsibility of the Lord's mind? And what happened? Whosoever believes upon him and whosoever walks according to his path, they will have constant gladness in their hearts because they are obeying the Lord of a God. They are trembling at his word and they are really doing his work. They will have that gladness in their heart and joy in their life. Not the world can pay for you through the materialistic riches. The world, what does it give? Rather than covering your dead body. It's the way how you cover the dead body in this world. But in Christ, we are buried in his body. Therefore, we no longer live to this world. If ever we are risen, we rise only for Christ. And such is a great privilege for us in the church age. 
an ordinary believer doesn't know what he is today in the church age and satan wants your ears to be blinded your eyes to be blinded and your nose not to smell the truth no you not when you get a rotten food you can smell it why the senses have been given for you don't you have your spiritual sense to discern what is right and what is evil? Looking upon the time, by eating strong meat you should be there, but you have still been found not even to drink the clear milk of 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2, which teaches for us to be clear from every mannerism of uncleanliness. What it is you're talking about? Go back and look your vindication. Go back and look your mental attitudes. Go back and look your retaliation. Go back and look hating your own father and mother. Go back and look what you think, being disobedient to the parents. And sometimes in my country, India, the moral standards of these unbelievers are far greater. They obey their parents at least. They say first, father and mother. Then the teacher, guru. Then the fourth one they call as God. And they can consider father and mother as their great gods, then those gods what they consider with their daimonian idotes. How much are we respecting our parents? You may claim every infinite reason to say they haven't trained you up. But you have your evolution to go in that path. You cannot go against your evolution. And that what do you find? Alibis, excuses, reasons. When we have been born in a Christian community, you should know very well that we have Bible, something for us, which will guide our path if our parents are not teaching us, if our teachers are not teaching us. This great word of the Lord of God is a, is a book which has been given for us to conquer or to be conquered it out. Not that what you have achieved to say that I am the English theological professor in that college. But it should be at the engage of your life. How much have you written the Bible? How much have you wrote? How much have you read the Bible? How much have you finished reading the Bible upon your knees? That will be a greatest achievement in the sight of the Lord of a God. Far less you can go and say about your bragamony, about your testimony to say, I am the angest one. Where you are the angest one. In the sight of the man, in the sight of the people. Can't you be the angest one by the age of 25 to kneel down and read the Bible at least once in your life? Can't you be the angest one to be writing your Bible upon the age of 30 at least once? In the filth of the translation of the English, whichever you are fluent with it. The time goes, dear brother, and don't worry, time goes. Tomorrow again we will come in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But today is not tomorrow. Tomorrow is not again tomorrow. It's some other day. Again tomorrow will be today. The decisions what the mind of this man will think. We shall go weekly once. That's enough. Who is going to go every day to Bible class? The decisions what the so-called fake pastor teachers or false pastor teachers who are of male believers, who are of entertaining clowns, who come to the pulpit, even they are not interested to produce. Hasn't I, haven't I told you yesterday the example about Alexander the king who made the nations to learn his language and come and talk to him. The right bona fide duty of that great king of kings and lord of lords minister will be to talk and to come every day for Bible doctrine, whether they believe here or not, whether he may talk to himself as we are talking today and recording ourselves. If they know hear us as well, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. And we are putting it in the YouTube so that it could be graciously been given to all parts of the earth. Because it is the Lord's mind to see to whom it should be going, it will go for them. Whether they may be few, when Christ of the Lord of our God could have twelve disciples because he is a great Lord of our God who stood with him. Even if I could have 61 or 62 subscribers for me, do you not think I am having more? And even that 62 we know very well how many of them are really following the word. Four or five. Quantity may be more, but quality is very few. Likewise, Christ of the Lord of God had enough quantity of disciples. 
Even the last one, Judas is for the, for the fulfillment of the scripture, even he was been left only the loving. And the twelfth one chosen by the Lord our God, not Matthias, as they may place the human mind never understands. What is the divine order? What are the divine standards? What are the divine will? What is the work of the divine Lord of our God in our lives? Human mind will never understand. No matter how our tough time they may go through. Election should be by the grace of the Lord of our God, not by the mere man. Though Peter could pray, and he thought he could bind someone on this work of apostleship. Matthias of a good report of a great man. We read his words there itself and none other his name in the entire Bible. The things what we want to tell dear brethren, lay not up your hands upon others as easily as you can think or as speedily as you can think. Wait. Even Peter would have been waited to gain some lessons of information because already he was been beginning in his ministry. And that they came along to take the twelve disciples and go back. But Lord of our God comes in the ninth chapter with Apostle Paul as his chosen vessel. The great burden of Apostle, uh, the great burden of Stephen, what he has taken. And the man at his feet saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. The manifestation of his grace. The manifestation of the love that we have to provide. Today among the one brothers, one fights for the eldership of the seat in the church, the lower one fights for the another category of the seat in the church. And yet they are of one blood of one mother, depicting idiotship in the churches. How will they pray to ask for forgiveness in the presence of the Lord of a God? Such a shame that we are able to look in our pulpits. And that they want to be the members of the committee. Let them answer to the Lord our God, not to us. Neither we are worried whether they answer to us or what. Who cares? Fear the Lord our God. Look upon his teaching. Learn what the Lord minds. Learn what the Lord wills. Not what we think, not what we mind, not what we can understand in our own mental conception of the thoughts. And many believers in the church age have forgot what the Bible is all about. Till they could go back and open up the Bible in the original language of the scriptures, they would never really wake up. Until and unless they come and seek to search in some meetings and they want to look again the Bible and say, what is this, what is that? And I can forget and get involved themselves. Satan is such kind of a cunning swimming nature. It would easily make you all to forgo and forget the fear of the Lord of God. That's why the parable of the sword of the sea. They hear for a time, they feel glad in their heart and Satan comes away and takes away that word from you. Therefore, James gives a great warning for us. Be not just mere hearers, but be the performers of the word of the Lord our God. And if you are not the performers of the word of the Lord our God, you are deceiving yourselves. Because you are para logizomai, miscalculating your entire spiritual life by replacing it with the things pertaining to tongues, by replacing it with the things pertaining to legalistical works, by replacing it with all mannerism of legalisms and creating you to be a hawak of lustful lies in your mind. And when you are not able to realize it is to be the election by the grace of the Lord of God in our lives and for which cause he says before the foundation of the world I have chosen you to be for me the glorious and the praise getting men for me on this earth and if you don't realize what it is then never you will understand for what purpose we have been kept alive on this earth dear brethren 
the life that we go through on this earth is so unique and great. Whether they may be men to listen these words or not, Lord our God knows grace before judgment to be pronounced for you. And we lack not in our duty because it is you who is going to drive us for his work every day till his burden has been kept in our lives to be fulfilled. And when once our work has been finished, it is you who knows to call us back home. And there we find when Peter says, abundance will be our entrance. But yet, we would not claim our abundance entrance because even we also grieved and squelched and lied to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to recover as soon as possible for us from our sin we did not. But we wasted our time in lustful patterns. Therefore, dear brethren, what are your needs that you are facing today? Lord God the Father is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And above all, if you are not a Christian, the Lord Jesus Christ is both the bread of life and the water of life. That's it. He is our bread and He is our water. The hunger and thirst in your soul can only be satisfied when you believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your Savior. And do it today. As we are going to have a word of prayer, we can come back and look. The same thing of Exodus 16 in comparison to Psalms 23. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we are going to share these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit and Lord and challenge us. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. So when we come back and look, in comparison to Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will drain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, a certain rate every day every day every day except on sunday and our people are so happy even to collect and keep on sunday but what did they became they became worms not able to eat hmm. how true it would be when they would pray matthew chapter 6 it would say for us give us today tomorrow's bread And we have been here on this earth, not able to realize, Lord, what you are preparing and keeping for us tomorrow in a golden part of spiritual manna. Can you enlighten us in that? Can we ask to the Lord of our God the things pertaining to Bible doctrine, what we shall teach tomorrow, what we shall come back and learn about that tomorrow, how we have to ordain our path of walk according to the will of your mind tomorrow to be taught in the presence of this mind of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We cannot ask, give us today tomorrow's bread. Neither we will ask because we are being just happy to preach weekly ones. The believers are happy to come weekly ones. And though you preach, preaching sheer what doesn't match. The cheap substitute doesn't match. What the Bible says, the order of the Bible, which says the law of Adonai Elohim in Hosea 4, 6, to preach with proper exposition of the Bible doctrine in the terms of isagogics, categories, and exegesis with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. That's what we need to preach, preach, preach. Expound the word. Exegeomai the word. Go back and take from the original language of the scriptures, not your, the filth of your translations, what you think. Because already enough of warnings have been given to Israelites and they failed to not realize that white has already been appeared. The same fate is happening today in our Christendom in spite of these great privileges that were given for us in the church age. The player of Baltimore privileges, though we are able to give and understand the white already of his mystery doctrine has been given for us, yet the people are not able to realize that they are saints. The people are not able to realize that every walk of their life and every step of their life they should trample Satan under their feet because of the dunamis power of overall one of Lord God, the Holy Spirit given for us according to the God of Spirit, according to the God of hope, according to the Lord God of joy, and according to the Lord God of love and peace. Though much is given for us and much is expected from us, yet we fail our Lord of our God. We are not here to ask our Lord of our God, give us today tomorrow's bread. 
neither we have that guts to think because we think only weekly once and what the minister from wherever he is though he has been qualified in the terms of the world standards or whether he has been not but they say just what for us we go to the church we give the tithes we give the money and lord we bribe him so that he is going to take care of us do you know what a life you are living do you think lord our god needs your money do you think you will be happy when you provide him every month your tithe that's how satan keeps you to understand being not to suffer for christ the sure and goodness of which we learn in the midst of the enemies as we see in psalms 23 is going to provide us the food And by that we mean to say what? The suffering that we go through, the godliness life that we go through and the suffering that we enter in is of a great value, is of a great significance. Don't think you can make peace with God by bribes. He demands the peace of God to be reigning in you provided you walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by learning and talking His terms, not our terms, not our standards, not our thinking. And isn't it a great shame that we come in the church age That though we have been given much, though we have been told to take much, yet what we do? We don't ask tomorrow's bread today. <laughs> How blessed will be those people whom our Lord our God has prepared and kept to be very jealous of His word and they would say, Lord, we require tomorrow's bread today also because time is short. For us, one hour of preaching is not enough. We have to go further. Help us to pay our tithe of the time every day and teach us the things that have been quite necessary for us to edify the mystery things for the life on this earth. Not just the standards of your shirats. Not just the standards of your legalisms. No, you know, do, no, you not what is your burden upon the Lord that it has been given for you, but you say, no, I do not. The very simple reason why you know not the burden of the Lord of a God is purely because you haven't loved my Lord, my rock. You haven't truly really understood what is the power that we have in Christ to love Him every day. Never you will understand a certain portion of every day that has been given to you to take. The fashion of this world will pass away, dear brethren, remember that. Don't trust the passion of this world. The fashion of this world will teach you for hell. But the only law which our Lord of God has given to those priests, to make them to be the Lama, the disciples, and not that you think you can train your pastors, and forsaking the flock so that the flock also can be like the shepherds in the work of evangelism in the shepherds of teaching the word and not inculcating them the original language of the scriptures though they are nigh unto death that's a great failure for you in your life the things that we tell for you every day dear brethren Christ our Lord our God will give greater grace, humble grace to those who are really humble enough to learn Bible doctrine, though they are nigh unto the point of death. He releases them from there so that it is His will, so that they should learn the knowledge of the truth, so that they should come and realize the knowledge of the truth. And that what you are finding today, no knowledge of truth in our pulpits. Therefore, my people are destroyed. They became silent, said the Lord. That great word which teaches for us the great importance of His mind, the great importance of His will, the great knowledge of His great theology to be called in the terms of neology for us. Hardly how many men can achieve to think that I will be the angest one kneeling down in the presence of the Lord of our God and read the Bible and to say, while I am angry, Lord, I want to carry the yoke of the burden of you every day. And what 
the thing that the world thinks we are fools we are happy to be fools for the sake of Christ the world calls us mad so what we are not worried we may be in the sight of the Lord of God as my adorable darling but in the sight of man, we may be called as fools or lunatics. Doesn't our Lord our God say for us in the Gospel of Luke, Rejoice! Be happy! For, name, for my name's sake, if they call you as cults. And how many people are not able to make it up to the cross? by our ignorance not able to believe upon that cross and for them we are accountable dear brethren this great unique spiritual life laid down upon the shoulders of every believer to understand the greatest burden of all time to realize and to look this greatest burden of all time that we shall be the double light as Zephnia 2 4 calls. The light being once shined, the grace upon grace, and through us when we become like Christ, like Himself, that we shall be the second light to this world to say through our mannerism that if Christ our Lord our God is the sun and we shall be like the moon in the darkness of this earth the moonlight which governs the night but we haven't been prepared to be like the moon to govern the light and we are not reflecting the sun that's the double light what he mentions you don't find in the KJV you will find only in the Hebrew don't worry about that the noon light the double light And for those people who are perishing without knowing my Christ in our locality as well, including me, we are accountable for it. They consider Christians as one among the cults. Because of the gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along in tongues and these idiots when they enter, not able to preach them simple gospel, they find in you that you are a moron and it winds you up to say, I cannot say Amen for your teaching, neither I can say Amen for your talking in tongues. And that they say, let's worship our Lord our God in our tongues. For what cause? And many men on this earth who perish by not looking the high standards of Bible doctrine, by not understanding the high standards of the word of the Lord our God. And for such cause, the pastors who provide them not a certain rate of everyday food feeding of the word in the original languages of the scriptures warn to us a double punishment unto us a very great double punishment for us for destroying the flock just for the sake of our belly just for the sake of our survival on this earth and not considering this high calling of the Lord of our God as the only calling in life to serve Him in spirit and in truth with all honesty and faithfulness. And we have been said over here, dear brethren, it is more honor in giving than in receiving. And we are not able to hear to hear for someone to provide for us any receiving for us. We are here to give you we have come to serve you and not to be served. And Lord of God could send food, meat and bread through the ravenous nature crow to the servant of the Lord of God through Elijah, to Elijah. When he could make after the river brook was been dried up to go to a widow. Do you not think the same thing what he says in the life of Macadania in Acts chapter 19? I have many men who have been there for me in this Macadania place, so be strong and be courageous and witness. Likewise, do you not think in this entire world he has his men? The men who could open up their hands and provide for the help of the Lord's servant. What are the desires of your heart? Do you not think is going to provide you? 
if you are truly the servant of Christ, if you are truly the Lord's mind, if you are truly the Lord's glory. And why are you going to want to beg your hands before others? And some pastors have become for belly, some pastors have become for marriages, some pastors have become pastoral, licensed, marriage-oriented persons. But coming to the Lord's mind and to the Lord's glory, they are nothing. And yet, Satan being an unsleeping fear in this world, it loves to take. No matter whatever mannerism that these people are inculcated, to provide them only that lies. The same thing, dear brethren, what we look. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. If Christ our Lord our God has given the bona fide work of the pastor teacher to daily expound the scriptures at Zephaniah 3 5. And he is not examining you think, but Job 7, 18 and 19 teaches to us moment by moment. He is examining us, moment by moment. He is training us, moment by moment. He is looking upon us. That's what we call as bag and rega. Are we coming to Bible class today or not? Examined by the Lord. Today is providing you a certain portion of grace. And that's why Apostle Paul says, my grace is sufficient. Or being said when he was been pleading for the thorn being kept. Thrice he besought to the Lord, but he said, my ark your strength. Grace is sufficient for you against any odd on this earth. But yet, that rate of grace which has been provided for you or for every individual believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and how we have to come back, how we have to look, how we have to train up. And at the end of the day, either you spend that grace in your flesh, either you spend that grace in your soul, by soulish thinking and not spiritual thinking. And very little you may spend that grace for your spiritual standards to be renovated in the Bible doctrine. Examine yourselves and look. Moving out from immorality or immoral life into moral life is not Christianity. Christianity has been called for you to live a life of a virtue, virtue, virtue. The highest and the best knowledge of Bible doctrine ever given for us. The virtue. Where the people of this world haven't got about this revolution that we have. In spite, in spite of giving or having this revolution, he has made even those bona fide gifted pastor teachers to teach every day. This, the virtue. Everything he has provided for us in his grace, why we need to use that grace in vain, but rather make that grace in the presence of the Lord our God for his glory forever. Show forth our fidelity. And yet there are men who don't understand what is fidelity at all. This great and unique privilege in the church age which has been given for us. To prove our fidelity that we have the sperm of Christ. And the creation is, is waiting for the manifestation of those adult sons who could make them to realize. What it is to walk in Christ and to be alive in Christ forever. This great joy, before this great joy, dear brethren, where he has given for us abundant pardon in Isaiah 55, 7, abundant grace in Romans 5, 17, abundant mercy in 1 Peter 1, 3, abundant life in John 10, 10, abundance of blood, God, the Holy Spirit, Titus 3, 6, and lastly, the abundance for entrance into the kingdom, 2 Peter 1, 11. Everything he has provided for us in abundance. Therefore, in his abundant grace and mercy and the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to have the true abundant life, you have that abundant pardon as well, so that he has showered upon us, so that when we are being saved, he comes again tomorrow to say, the humble grace being given to you, at least today, come back and learn and be faithful to the Bible doctrine. Everything he has given for us, who can give like that great Lord of a God?
and he says in Romans 8 32 he that spareth not his own son but delivered him, him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things so what need are the needs that are facing you to hindrance not to obey the Lord's mind every day in Exodus 16 the people complained of hunger in 17 they complained of thirst as a believer in the church, are you complaining of your spiritual hunger and spiritual thirst to your pastor teacher? The time goes off. Whether you believe it or not, time is short. The principle which has been effectively worked is by Satan to make the time for its effective use. But we believers, though abundant grace has been given, abundant mercy has been given, abundant pardon has been given, abundant life has been given, we are not able to be aware about our time that we are of short. Therefore, in 1 Corinthians 7, he says, Though who are married, let them not be as married. Though having property, let them not to enjoy the property, because time is short. And in this time of short, whether you survive 80 years or 120 years, whichever manner you take, the two to three hours of drama, or in fact, indeed, some of the youth perishing at one hour, and in fact, indeed, some of them perishing even at half hour. By that we mean by the age of 20 to 40. By the age of 40, if they're not able to grow up to become the Neoniscus crowds. The way how Elisha called upon those men who taunted him to say, a bald-headed man, the way how Elijah went, your master, why can't you go there? And he called upon the bears to trample them out into pieces. They are not kids. They are Nareems, the adult ones by the age of 40. The same thing what we read, the Neonus cast of either by the age of 39 to 40. They haven't learned the responsibility for the family. They haven't learned the responsibility for the fearing of the Lord of a God. They haven't taken care very well. They have become the wandering lunatics. Your translation will mislead you to say they are kids. But we know very well they are not kids, but they are Nareems the, by the age of 40. Because they have learnt already one hour of grace by the time in 40 years of their life. But they could not come to the reality which our Lord of God intended. So it is with you in the church age as well. Who has to inculcate these things? It is you who have to search our Lord of God. Doesn't he say, search me, seek me, and you will be found by me? Doesn't he come in Revelation 3.19 to say, the rebound words, come back. Telling and teaching to us to understand. I shall stand at the door and knock. The one who opens and he, the one who hears and opens the door, with them I will have my dinner. That's what the rebound fellowship, again getting back into the fellowship of the Lord, being a believer. And if you're fallen because of that great abundant, gr abundant grace of pardoning power which was given to you, come back to be with the fellowship of the Lord of God day by day, breath by breath. Don't let go your grace to wane. The Lord's hand are still outstretched, seeking and waiting for those men who would come and complain against the hunger of spiritual food, who could come and complain against the thirst of the spiritual water. Because Lord God, the Father in heaven, is our bread of life, is our water of life, and what else we can tell, even the breath, the very breath we take, if it is not in the spiritual breath, we are dead. What does man have except breath in his nostrils? But we have something more, which has been called the breath of lives being being given for us at the moment of salvation when we believe in Christ, being regenerated or born again. We have the breath of life. None believers do not have. Therefore, till they could lose the breath in from their nostrils, teach them not to walk according to the prince of the power of this air, not to become the adult sons of disobedience, neither become the technon of his wrath but in his great grace and abundance of mercy he has called us for his glory and he has made us to learn what is the truth dear brethren think about these issues life is too short the Psalms 23 which has been given for us certainly enlightens to understand every breath of our life. Those who faithfully walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, 
And verse number one, it goes to say for us, Yahweh, the one who is attending one for me, the attending one in Matthew 23, the way he reprimanded the wolves, is going to correct us through his word. Either it is truth with him and in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or else there is nothing with him. You may be not true to your own self, to your own conscience, but you know very well you have to be true to the Lord of a God. Therefore he calls those who walk uprightly. Therefore he calls in Deuteronomy 18 as well to tell those who walk perfect. He wants Abraham to be proved that he was the Aha friend of the Lord of a God. That he has all the possession and he loves the Lord of our God with all their soul, with all their strength, with all their might. The same thing he acquires in Deuteronomy 6, teaching to them, Hear, O Israel, the Lord of our God is one Lord. Love him with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might. Constantly teaching to us the importance of Bible doctrine. If you don't know how to love, for what cause you will love your wife or your girlfriend? So there should be something thinking in her that she is found to have some loyalty in her. Then only you can love her. If there is nothing that you can find about her to love or something of an essence in her that you could be pleased with her, then how you can love. So you should have some thinking. In the same manner, to love my Christ, you should know what he is. You should have some knowledge about my Christ. And that knowledge is what we are telling for you every day to come and learn Bible doctrine. Don't waste up your time in this great and unique dispensation of the church age. Therefore, he tends, he feeds us. And what did he feed? John chapter 17, the greatest prayer. And he is our companion, Romans 8, 26-28, the Sunani Lambon and I. And in nothing I shall lack the kasir. And that meant to say, to lack or fail, to want or bereaved or decrease or made lower. Because when my Lord is my teacher, that's what it should be. What does he do the first one? In verses of vegetation. He is making, reclining me to rest. And in the waters of resting places, he is conducting me, the Word and the Spirit, John 4, 24. Worshipping the Lord of our God in spirit and biblical truth. Spirit is water, biblical truth is the green pastures. And what does he do? He restoreth my soul, the Hebrew word shiv. He will restore your soul according to the whole of Clara's, what we read in James 1 4, according to Colossians 3 10, the EI con process of the Lord, so that when we are standing in his presence of 1 Thessalonians 5 23, without spot, without blame, in our soul, spirit, and body, we should be to the Lord of our God. And that's what the way he's going to restore our soul. And by that we mean to say what? We have been put to death in Christ. We are looking upon the high calling of the Lord of our God by putting Colossians. 3 verses 1 and following till to number 16 by richly dwelling in the word of the Lord our God putting to death necromatic the old sin nature and then only we can restore by the Lord of our God the nepesh soul of me and by that we mean the diseased condition of your soul where Satan wants to put the lips on pressure therefore John 16 33 which teaches for us all the time to understand in this world we have pressure all the time but in Christ we have that abundance of peace and we have that eternal life only in him and therefore for unbelievers believe in the Lord and for believers walk to realize the pathos condition of your soul to be restored and what he's doing he constantly guides in the rounds of righteousness on account of his great name and therefore he says in Psalms 22 I shall declare thy name in the midst of this assembly I shall recount them as the people they could be for affairs the scribes so very greatly he says that he is constantly guiding me in the rounds of righteousness. We haven't even met one round of righteous, righteousness in us. But Christ our Lord of our God says he wants to guide us in the rounds of righteousness. Rounds. The first round being the inner spirit. The second round being the soul. The third round being the body. He wants us to guide in the righteousness of him. Because of what? Because of that great name. Why we have that name as Christian? Because we have the sperm of Christ. 
and we are really not working to be as Christians because we haven't going through to become to understand the disciples of the Lord's mind Acts chapter 11 claiming with all the purpose of your heart to be the disciples and the Gnostics could recognize that we are Christians but today the world are not able to recognize though you wear a cross and say you are Christian because your deeds are not being of the redeemed one therefore dear brethren when you have the rounds of righteousness round about you, the word says, Though I shall walk in a ravine of shadow of death, I shall never fear evil, because he is with me, and the rod and staff, or he is with me like a club, and the staff of you, they are constantly comforting me. Again, what? The tending work, recollecting to your mind the knowledge of Bible doctrine, what you have learned. They will comfort all the time while you speak, while you sleep. The word of the Lord of God speaks to you, says Proverbs. When you wake up, it talks to you. It guards you. So when we have the mind of Christ being surrounded by the Lord's glory, why we fear evil or death? We are not worried about the mouth, neither we are worried about the area or the fears. And then, since we have been there in the fellowship of the rounding of the righteousness of the Lord's mind, he says for us, you are arranging to the faces of me table in front of the ones being my enemy. That's what Satan. What is arranging for us? Don't ever think about your physical food. He's arranging for us about the spiritual food. Though no matter however Satan could say that you cannot come to Bible doctrine by this or by that, by that reason. But he says when you are walking in him, he will certainly make up a time for you to come. Daily 2 hours and 40 minutes for your great work of the tithe. So you are arranging to faces of me, table in front of the ones being enemies. And you make sleek in the oil head of me, cup of me, the satiation or the things Thou anoint my head with oil, which my cup runneth over. And saying for us, you have abundance of the Holy Spirit. Titus 3.6 Every time it's your liberty, says Galatians 5.1. Stand fast in the liberty, where with Christ our Lord our God has set us free. You're losing your liberty when you sin. But here we find the cup before your enemies, which our Lord our God will make slick with the oil, and he will make it for a great satiation. And then those who walk in this, those who are having that great victory over Satan, victory over death, and tells to them, those who walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, he says, yes, goodness and kindness, the church of the unfailing love of the Lord our God and his goodness. They shall pursue me, not your afflictions of Lamentations 3, what we read, but the goodness and chastity of the Lord of our God will pursue us. Though you say, no, don't want, they will pursue you. Look upon the challenge of the Lord of our God, not just by giving tithes, by giving your time of the tithe to rid away the standards of your thinking and to be graceful for His grace. They perceive you. The word says follow, but in the Hebrew it says they shall perceive you. But here in the church, grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they have been pursued by their own lustful patterns of sin. Therefore, goodness and kindness, they shall pursue me all the days of Chaya, Kaya, again. And I dwell in the house of the Lord of a God. And the dwelling of the house in the Lord of the Lord of a God for all the days of our life forever. Even after we die, we are in His presence. Though we are alive, we are living only for Christ, for His work. Such great word which has been given for us in the church age. And this Psalms has been written long back. We are not talking about the present dispensation where it could be saying it is not applicable for us. But it's a lifetime of eon lesson given for those in the past or in the time of hypostatic union or for us in the present as well. Well, this lesson teaches to us at a great importance to understand how that we shall dwell and the word Yashab meant to say to remain and to sit and to be abide and to dwell there and giving for us to understand that to the point like marrying him and what a great privilege we have in the church age and at what are we doing in the church age you know very well what it is. Neither I expect any answer from you all. Dear brethren, think about these issues. Life is too short. Remember, if ever Psalms 23, I want to quote and teach. 
It is a psalm for those who come every day for Bible doctrine. Surely the way how he says, the kindness, the chasad of the Lord of God, the unfailing love, and the tub, the goodness, which shall pursue the believer. And the tub, which is called the one which is pleasant and agreeable, which is of a good and excellent one, and that one which is worth not only in prosperity or happiness or welfare, but also worth in the terms of your moral values, of your things pertaining to virtue, and those things in the widest sense which applies for great gladness and joyful and graciousness for the great pleasure what we have in Christ. That's the goodness, Tob. And Chasad, you know very well the unfailing love of the Lord of our God. From everlasting to everlasting, before eternity passed, you knew very well that this will be the day that we talk about him on this earth in this manner. And he has provided for us that Chasad, because we give number one priority for Bible doctrine, no matter what, even though there is a point of death in our life, in our home. That's Chasad, unfailing love. He provides everything for us in his examination. And if every believer doesn't wake up to the examination of which he calls, the way have you given for Abraham, yet you being qualified. Though you don't go through the life on examination of Abraham, David is a different aspect, Job is a different aspect, Isaiah is a different aspect, Peter is a different aspect. But the life of Abraham is not so. He was been called to be the friend, and through him all the nations of these Gentiles will be blessed by Christ. He passed the examination of a friend. Have we passed? Had he called you his friends? Had he called you to be the depositors of his mind and has entrusted you with his glory? The simple thing what he requires to teach or being taught by the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher in your presence who have this heavenly spiritual gift, not the gift of this world according to your qualifications. If they are so, they will not dissolve the standards of Bible doctrine. They would come to teach for you in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic as we have read in Hosea 4. And they further come to enlighten you to teach the burden wherewith the people are perished without having this knowledge. And they will come to teach to you every day to understand the great importance of the word of the Lord of our God as number one priority. And they go to teach to you the work wherewith they have been kept alive in this earth. Therefore, dear brethren, this great verse once again going to Hosea 4 6 to teach the own people of me they have put to silent, they have put for destruction, they have put the way the things called as dissolution because of the failure of gap. And what is that failure of gap? the daily teaching of Bible doctrine. Therefore, dear brother, in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 16, and the proper relationship between God and man demands the knowledge of Bible doctrine plus his fear. Therefore, the failure of knowledge of Bible doctrine to be taught daily, and that they have rejected the mass, the Hebrew word to say, to feel undone, and they have dissolved it. What they have dissolved? Dissolving, they have things, the knowledge, and hence Christ our Lord of our God has dissolved them to be the priests. And what they're doing, they're forgetting. They have mislay to be obvious to the want of memory or attention. They forgot because of their ignorance and arrogance. What they forgot, the law of the Lord of our God. Therefore, I shall forget their sons, moreover. It doesn't talk over here about the daughters, but the sons. Because they think they can pass it down to the next generation. For example, Paul the Nicoran who has his son from there to the next, again to the next. When he's forgetting their sons, remember what a wrath they would have. And this great privilege what we have in the church age, being given for us to understand the great importance of Bible doctrine to be number one in our pulpits. The greater you dissolve, being silent, not to teach word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. In the original language of the scriptures, which is for the superior knowledge of Christ, for every believer, being intended and given for us this Bible, 
not just for the pastor teachers but for everyone 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 could be like Christ said the word far less everyone couldn't be like the so-called bona fide gifted pastor teacher according to the conduct of his teaching to be taught in our pulpits therefore the cup of coal like the conduct of the pastor teacher how the people should grow up and as we have in the case of life of Apostle Paul saying follow my conduct how much more it has to be for us in the church. The greater you reject the biblical law, the greater you dissolve the biblical law of daily teaching, the greater you are encroaching yourself, the things pertaining to sin on this earth. Think about these issues, dear brethren. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Don't let go your valuable time, the great time, the unique time of this church age. The grace of the Lord our God which has been given for you into vain. Come back to the standards of reality. Look and consider upon the Lord's mind. And there is nothing greater on this earth than to do Lord's will. Think about this issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. With our head, bowed and eyes closed, the closing ones have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In our ability to Lord God, the Father, that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and learning the truth will set you free as many people don't understand about these things they have even thought of considering their great reality which is of no value at all therefore dear brethren think about these issues the right duty of the bona fide gift of the pastor teachers is to train them up every day and the greater the time that they don't train up every day, the greater they're going to lose their real called responsibility to the Lord. Think about these issues, dear brethren. The happiest thing is to serve a Lord of a God, not expecting anything to receive in return, because we are unprofitable slaves. We have a Lord of a God has done their lives enough. Enough of grace, enough of everything. Looking at our lives as a great testimony to the Lord of our God, we go back and consider what all He has done and bestowed upon us. Not only the sickness, not only the emotional sickness, not only the mental sickness, everything being cleansed. And what else we require for our Lord of our God than to lay down our lives as a living sacrifice to Him. Think of what this is, dear brethren. Tomorrow we shall come back and continue. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to understand the world through Psalms 23 at the same time in comparison to Exodus 60. Father, every pastor teacher, let them to wake up to understand Hosea 4 6. Let them come back once again to put in the foundations the original language of the scriptures, being taught every day in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic with proper exegesis, isagogues, and categories. You shall surely pursue them with goodness and your unfailing love, provided they walk in the rounds of their righteousness. And you are my shepherd, O oh Lord, to teach every day what is the fear of evil or death that we should worry. If ever we worry, we should worry how much you are grieving and squelching and lying, then welling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If ever we worry of fear, today we have not taken thy word. And how a certain rate of every day, the portion of your spiritual manna being given for us, and how many of them are not able to take them, O oh Lord. Help them to come back again in your abundant pardoning of grace. So, Father, we give everything into thy mighty hands. Kindly lead us in thy truth. Those who are really thirst of thy word, O Lord, teach them more and more. And we are indeed know very well, O Lord, what you are in our hearts. Because you are the one who knows even the motivation of our thought behind our eyes. And you know very well what we seek and search. Father, fulfill us according to thy grace for thy glory. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten and challenge us by this message. Amen.